Cisco ASAV, VPN, dual authentication, Active Directory, and Cisco Duo. Now, it doesn't have to be ASAV. It can be any ASA, but to go with the theme in this series, I'm using ASAV. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a AAA server group, and we're going to give it a name. Give it a name. We'll select LDAP, and we'll select OK. Then we're going to highlight that server group, and we're going to add an actual server now. So in my case, it's management interface. We'll give it the IP address. Then we'll do the base DN after we select the, the uh, server type, which is Microsoft. Base DN is DC equals Cisco. DC equals local. We're going to look beyond the base DN. And here we're going to use SAM account name. Be careful on the syntax here, it's important. Login, this is where you might struggle. You might think CN equals administrator, colon, or um, comma, DC equals. It's not, it's actually uh, UPN. So administrator at cisco.local in this case you can create a, a restricted account i'm being a little lazy here enter in the password select ok and you're good to go you apply this out in my case the config was already there previously um, so let's test it out Sales one, put in the password. And if all is uh, done correctly, we should get a successful authentication. And let's see, perfect. All right, so the other element that we've got to do now is go in and look at our connection profiles for clientless and the AnyConnect connection profile and modify them to use this new server group um, as the primary authenticator. So today it's local. We're gonna change it to be the object that we created for the AAA server group. Select okay, say yes. And we'll do the same for uh, the next one. Actually, you're gonna say no to these two, at least in this in the, in my use case, right? I I don't really care about these uh, particular parameters being uh, prompted for. Now you probably are gonna fix that in in production, but um, but anyways, this is really focused on that primary authentication using AD, and then the secondary using uh, Cisco Duo. So now client list and remote access VPN set up. Now we'll move to the next part of the configuration. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in our Duo dashboard. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an application. And I've got this shrunk up here just so I can keep both um, the Duo application side as well as the ASDM on the same page without having to flip between the two. So you can see there's some crunching here, but um, but anyways, so we're gonna look for Cisco ASA SSL VPN. And we'll protect that application. And when we do that, there's a bunch of, parameters that we can set within the application. We're not going to go into that too much detail because I've got other videos with that. Um, but we're going to get it all set up, right? And, and the user account that we're going to have already in Duo and we're going to assign it that application. So in ASDM, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to clientless SSL VPN and web controls. And what we're going to do is 
we're going to import uh, a file that we downloaded from the, the page on the side right underneath the, the Cisco ASA SSL VPN header. It says download duo Cisco package. We've downloaded that and we've up, uploaded that JavaScript into that spot within clientless VPN. Now what we're going to do here is there's a specific uh, JavaScript that we got to call. So it's a piece of code that we're going to inject. And so what we do, we'll, we'll do is we'll jump to the, um, the guide and we'll pivot down to the section where that piece of code is. And again, remember this is complimentary. This shows you how to get it configured and set up, but it doesn't hurt to review the guides and understand exactly what is in there and maybe some uh, focus around maybe more of the optimization or additional settings that you can leverage. Now you can see this, this uh, line of code here where you see that Cisco dash VX, that X actually corresponds with the file version that we downloaded um, in this case six. And you can see that when we imported the file, it, it was, uh, it said V six um, in that file. So now we've got those two components done within clientless VPN. Now what we need to do is go and, and configure a, um, a triple a, um, server group that will use LDAP that will call, um, duo for our second factor, right? And so we'll give it a name here. We'll call it uh, duo dash LDAP. Sounds pretty good. And once we do that, we go down to the bottom section, we add, and now we actually, we highlight the, that duo dash LDAP. Then what we do is we add, and now we're gonna configure the LDAP settings. So for the server name or IP address, we're gonna actually put in the API host name. We're gonna change the timeout to 60. For our base DN, it's gonna start with DC equals, and then it's the integration key. And then it's comma DC equals duo security, comma duo, or sorry, DC equals com. And copy that, because we're gonna use that as the, the the login DN as well. Naming attributes CN, so common name. And then the password's gonna be our secret key. Get that in there. Say okay. And so now we have there our dual LDAP server group and now we've got our uh, server uh, parameters for that group. Okay, moving along here. In clientless SSL VPN, now we go to connection profiles. And the reason why we gotta go here is we've gotta select it to use that second factor. So we go into advanced secondary authentication. We go to dual LDAP. Um, and then it's just, uh, you can hide that, per, that uh, the secondary name. Go ahead and apply that. And so that's done for client list. There's nothing more to do on the client list side, but uh, we also wanna have a second factor for our AnyConnect client. So we'll create a profile. I didn't have one created here. You may already have one, so just edit that one. And when we come back, we're gonna do umbrella, and so we're gonna modify the, the, the platform again, right? To add those modules that we want deployed. Okay, so in preferences part two, we wanna just change this to 60 seconds, timeout. But the other thing is we still gotta go back to that connection profile, right? Cause we have to select that second factor. So let's go back to client profiles. 
or sorry, connection profiles, I should use the right term here. And let's go to secondary authentication and let's select our duo-ldap server group. Use primary username, so hide that secondary username on login. And apply that. And that's it, right? Six minutes, maybe seven. Um, you have built out the integration with Duo. Now here what I'm gonna do is quickly create a group And I've got a sales one user, so I'll probably assign it to this group. But when you're going through and configuring it, this, you can also start looking at, you know, what devices connect, what the health of the device is. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with Duo. I'm not including that stuff in this particular video. I have other videos that talk more about that, but there's a lot more that you can do further ensuring the asset that's connecting is the assets you want connecting, right? And I always say it's the, the context of everything, right? It's the, the, the context of the user, the context of the device, and all of that builds one context um, of understanding of that asset and then whether or not you want it to connect. Here's where we can apply a group policy. So we can come in here and add that uh, ASA VPN group if you don't select a policy, you're going to get an error here. So you need to select a policy or create one. I have what happen to have one here. And this just tells you specifically things that you want the connection to, 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 to also look at, right? Um, and again, I've got other videos about that specifically. And here's a kind of an idea of the group policy, full disk encryption, et cetera, right? All right, so that's it. Let's jump to a, a, a workstation and log in. So we already got the web page open to uh, clientless VPN. We'll log in with sales one user, put in the password, log in. And look at that. I can uh, send a push, call me, enter a passcode. In this case, I'll send a push. Just hiding a little bit of detail there. Hit OK, and I'm on. That's it. Let's try the uh, AnyConnect client. There's a little bit difference here. This time I'm using a passcode and I actually got it sent to me. Um, so go ahead and put in your um, username and password. And this is where that second password is gonna be that SMS passcode. Or you can go look at the passcodes within your Duo application. And that's it. 